Hey, hello. You're starting to travel with Wolf like Human Surfing and IT and IT Security. Today, looking at the importance of designing for the distracted and the rushed. I was at Black Hat last week, and at Black Hat in my hotel, I had a, a washer dryer, one of those one unit things. And uh, at Black Hat, I had a meeting to go to, and I went, ah, I could iron my clothes or I could throw in the dryer. So I threw in the dryer. I thought this would be great. Hit the button, and uh, it wasn't drying. Hit another button, and it wanted to wash. Hit another button. I'm like, no, let it open, and it wouldn't open. So I just figured I'd go through the whole cycle. So I hit the button and it goes. It starts spitting and spitting in water. It's going everywhere. And I'm like, all right, well, at least when that's done, it'll dry it. It stopped. I did not dry it. <laughs> and I was like, no. And so I went to start hitting buttons again. It's trying to wash it again. I'm like, no. Ripped it open. And that's how I ended up rushing across Vegas to the Mandalay Bay, up several escalators, into a meeting in more or less white clothes. Not too cool. But there's several problems there, right? There was distracted moments. There was a rush. It was with an interface I was unfamiliar with. And it's those types of situations that we all too often find ourselves in when we're doing instant response or investigation. When you're under the gun and you're trying to get something done fast and you're not fully thinking, those are the times that you need the interface to make it simple, to reduce the cognitive load, and to make it possible for you to get things done. And we do not necessarily design for that. We design because our users are intelligent, right? We design because our users are experienced, right? We design because our users are familiar with our tool sets, right? <laughs> no! When you have situations where people are jumping in for the first time, or maybe they've even done it a few times, and they're rushed, you have situations where you don't necessarily see the cues. The situations where the users have uh, what's known as attentional uh, blindness. Your attention is like this, and therefore you're blind to a lot of the cues that would otherwise guide you in getting a task done. Think about it um, in terms of like running into a building that maybe you've been to once or twice before, and you gotta get something real quick before the store closes, and all of a sudden you can't find the aisles you wanted. Now compare that experience to an airport. Airports are stellar at wayfinding for the exhausted, right? You can be tired, you can not necessarily speak the language, you can be hungover, you can be irritable, and yet you can still find your way through the airport because it has a million and one signs saying where to go with icons and logos and floor plans. Because most <laughs> people who are going to the airport probably don't go to that particular airport all the time and probably are not in the best cognitive spaces. It is imperative if you're designing security tools to think like an airport designer. It's imperative if you're designing security tools that you think like your users are going to be on their absolute worst day. And how do we make an interface where they can win when they're getting breached and it is indeed the absolute worst day? Love to hear your comments and feedback, social media or comments below, hit me up. If anyone knows how to use that unit dryer, let me know. Oh, and shout out to Sandra, AKA Pocalope, who was teasing me on Facebook about using laundry as an analogy. <laughs> Cheers.